from the Book of Ea, a Codex of the History of Eos. The wars for dominion raged on for almost 300 years, 299 years to be precise. When the land known as Mezzanin broke away from Atalan and declared its own sovereignty, it threw the entirety of the region into conflict. Bonds older than most remembered became severed in an instant, and a malaise cast itself over the remaining kingdoms that in theory remained in union and fellowship. But only in theory. The cause of the division and breaking away is still up for debate, for it was not in an instant that the seeds of discord were sown. Some say it had its roots in the adoption of the then new method by which Mezzanin began to see its power and fortunes rise. Forging. Whatever the case, the world was out of balance as large fleets of warships and armies poured out from the island kingdom, commanded by then Emperor Kazian Claw. For 229 years, the wars and conflicts raged, until one day, 229 years later to be exact, all of a sudden, they stop. Chronicled by Maya Swin. This is The First Noel by A. Diallo Jackson. years before. There were no orders shouted from captains nor generals nor kings. There were no grunts or groans of horses of war being readied on the line for one last desperate and magnificent charge. No frightened soldiers whispered final goodbyes meant for loved ones in far-off lands. Absent both were the boisterous taunts of posturing warriors and the sound of grinding stone sharpening steel swords for battle. As Magus Nalana Nasir came up and over the rise, down into the muted green rolling fields of the Kamlan Plains, there was only still unsettling quiet. She did not expect the silence of the once peaceful moorland that she had remembered from days as a young magi so long ago. She had expected two armies in the throes of heated battle, a clash of forces the likes of which Eos had not seen since the last days of the age, when the first kin still walked amongst the people and creatures of Eos. The armies of Mezzanin, with their technological wonders that not even weathered old Nasir could begin to understand fully, where were they? The warriors of Goth, bred for battle first, with their goading taunts and possessing such consuming obsession with their code of honor for a life of conflict and warfare that had guided even their most mundane of day-to-day affairs, where were they? There was nothing, no one, not a soul stirred or moved across the fields that should have held thousands upon thousands within its boundaries. There was only the sound of knee-high tall reeds of grass rustling in the cold coming winter wind. She let her tail flick and move through it as she moved forward. It was a playful sensation. She had not let herself feel since she was young Nalana Nasir of the other kin race of Felidane. So much time had passed from there to now. She would have to begin cherishing the now once she had returned home. But not right now. Never now. Quiet was the word that had first come to her. But no. The word with more precision was silence. For quiet spoke to a still and peaceful calm. This, however, this silence, it was unsettling and unnerving and it should not be. But then, no, she heard something else. And no, not here, it could not be. It was even more unlikely than the silence itself. Not now, how? It was at least half a league away by the sound of it. She picked up her pace and moved with haste through the mist and fog toward the impossible. It was at least half a league away by the sound of it. She picked up her pace and moved with haste through the mist and fog toward the impossible. Bright war banners, standards of the two absent armies laid strewn across the cold grass which had just begun to shed its vibrancy at the turn of winter. They had met there all the signs of a parley. 
the green and blue standard of mezzanine with its bare heraldry, set limp and lifeless atop gold-tipped wooden poles that appeared to have been laid down suddenly and with haste before retreat. She carefully stepped over numerous long, thin steel blades with their jagged hilts, bound in tough leather. They were mixed among scattered banners of the Kingdom of Goth, with its centaur heraldry. All about were the strange weapons of the warriors of Mezzanin, fashioned from the silver-blue metal from one of their mines at the southern tip of Suthos Nock. All intriguing, but Nasir would have to contemplate it for another day. She heard it again, that sound that could not be, in a field that was all but silent, but should have been brimming with sounds. It had to be a slight, or trick, or a sage. In all her years, she had never... At the center of the field lay the stone circle of Kamlan, ancient and imposing. The nine jagged stones that jutted upward from the ground were wrapped in a blanket of an opaque dark gray mist. The stones appeared as hazy shadows in the morning light. On a clear day, and even under the most normal of circumstances, a stone circle presented as sinister, looming, watching, the holder of secrets from before life on Eos. Today, it felt worse. It felt like a stake in the ground, a marker of a grave. It was a sign of something, perhaps the harbinger of the end of all things. It felt like nothing. It felt like death. And yet, in the center of it all, was something else. Closer now, the noise now pierced the sensitive cat-like Velidane ears of Magus Nasir. She moved her furry paws upward to muffle the sound. Then, just beyond the circle, in a small indentation between the tall reeds, she saw it, and she could not believe her eyes. Magus Nasir stopped at the edge of the stone circle with caution, against every innate impulse. She stood still completely and with a pause for what felt like an eternity of moments before she accepted that this was actually happening. All she wanted to do in the moment was to protect the child. This should not be. She removed her thick outer cloak. It was scratchy and rough and was made to be sturdy enough to protect from the cold of winter. It would be uncomfortable for the child, probably, but it would protect it until she could get it to safety. As she cradled the small one and wrapped it tight, she closed her eyes and spoke. Fenwin Kolar. The air surrounding the child grew warm. As it did, the cries lessened, and finally the baby cooed with the contentment of a child that finally felt safe. Magus Nasir wrapped the cloak into a sling and placed it over her shoulder. The baby rested gently and secure, while Nasir suddenly looked upward and all around. The field of battle, or the battle that never was, she could not be sure. Desolate and empty, she would need to trek through and with haste. There was a story here to be told, a story that possibly only the child knew. As Nasir headed back over the rise and out of the faded green rolling fields of the Kamlan Plains, she looked over her shoulder one last time at the stone circle, distant but still prominent on the horizon, even through the mist. Ancient and sinister and the holder of secrets from the time before even when the other kin and human kin walked the earth, even more now it felt like a stake in the ground, a marker of a grave. It was in fact a sign of something. It had to be, perhaps the harbinger of the end of all things. It felt like death, and it was breathing down the back of her neck. The light, where was the light? She looked up to the sky and it seemed to dim, but then she quickly realized, no, it was not the daytime sky that was fading. It was as though the immediate area around her became draped in darkness as though a veil had been thrown over it. The hairs of her fur-lined body stood on end, responding to danger. Her creaky old and ancient body wanted to move much faster than it possibly could manage in the moment. The grunt and growl of the creature was all she could hear. What is a Magus without their shepherd? The mantra of the Orium rattled in her brain now. Foolish, stupid, stupid, foolish. She reached into the sleeve of her long purple robe, trimmed with rune-shaped golden stitches. 
Her hand fumbled, stiff with cold and old age. Her furry knotted fingers clenched the metal kept warm by the heat of her body. The advent. She grasped it from its hidden place and felt the tingle of aether jump into her hand. It was cold, but it was familiar, like home. Here was her power. She looked into her arms then, before turning to face what dark creature was stalking her. And then she realized it. She held the answer to the question. From the center of the stone circle that felt like death, she had found what should not exist. And that thing was life. What is a magus without their shepherd? She should never have come alone. She would have to handle this herself. The creature struck, sharp claws against the back of her neck. Blood. She had not seen her own in centuries. The advent. She hadn't enough time to draw it free. Still in her sleeve, she clenched it tight and closed her eyes, just for a moment. Do as I say, she would always tell her students. The students needed this guideline, but not she. Not the great Magus Nelana Nasir. The child. She cradled it, firm yet gentle. I must save this child. She turned to face the creature. She did not have enough time to see it before it struck again. What is a Magus without their shepherd? And the heat of battle began. Thank you for listening to The First Noel. The First Noel was written by A. Diallo Jackson. Sound production by Primus Play Productions. The First Noel theme by Marianthi Pezzeridis. Join our Patreon, and please be so wonderful to like and subscribe. Thank you, and see you next episode. Next time, The Promise.